So I'm sitting here at this juvenile facility volunteering time. And I'm sitting there talking with a black kid and a Hispanic kid. The Spanish dude said to me, hey, I need to ask you a question. And I need an answer on it. I said, okay. He said, I have a Caucasian partner who was out in the streets with me. Like, in the streets with me, getting it. And he said at the same time that he got arrested, his Caucasian partner got arrested, the same exact time they were both cuffed, they were both put in the police car, they were both taken away. He said to me, why is he not in this facility with me? Why is he not in a facility? And the black kid said, look around. Why are there no Caucasian kids in here with us? Where are they? And I'm sitting there looking around and I didn't have an answer for them. So what I said to them was, let me get back with y'all on that. Let me research that a little bit and get an answer. But if you think about it in the juvenile facilities, you don't see them. Mainly all you see is blacks, Hispanics, and you might get an Asian swing across there a few times. But for the most part, it's populated with blacks and Hispanics. If some of y'all have some knowledge on where they take the Caucasian kids, please drop it in here. But I am going to do some research on that because statistically, they are doing the same exact crimes, but they are not in these facilities. Where are they? We have to get to the bottom of it. And the other part to it is, we gotta start rehabilitating these kids. We're coming up with these programs, that's giving them what well, we call them trades, but they're really a vocation. Then when they get out of these facilities, they don't have any certificates or anything that can prove that they have work experience. All they can say is, yeah, I took carpentry. But you have no proof of taking carpentry. You have no paper. So that means when it's time to go out into the work world, you don't have no skills according to the company because you can't show me where you were taking these classes or you have something of substance that can say that you did do it. So I think we need to structure, construct these vocational schools a little better so that it can better fit these youth. College is not for everybody, by all means. But these trades are very important because you're gonna always need electricians. You're gonna always need carpenters. You're gonna always need HVAC. You're gonna always need plumbing. Master plumbers make a great living. We have to push those things because we're gonna reach a point where we don't have them, and what's gonna happen is the prices are gonna run up, just like they're doing food, saying that it's a shortage. It's not a shortage of food. You drove the price up and don't wanna bring it back down. That's the problem. But then you work these jobs and you don't wanna give raises, cost of living raises that is applicable and it can apply to and help feed some of these people families. Why do people have to work two jobs when you can accommodate them with one? The other thing with these kids, we have to start making sure that we are better mentors in the home. What do you mean by that? Kids are a product of their environment. What they see is what they'll do. 
they may veer off and do some other things, but what they see is what they'll do. It's just like saying, hey, go to church every Sunday or every Wednesday, go to Bible study. God will save you. Well, if I don't see my parent going to church every Sunday, if I don't see my parent being a good Samaritan, if I don't see my parent being kind to people, not being mean, being given, then why would I do it? So I'm saying that to say, if you're going to tell your kid about something or a way of life, you have to be that model to show that it worked. Not the streets. Because if you let the streets raise your kid, it leads them to two places. Death or jail. And we don't want either.